right? Some of the common financial ratio that we can build up from from this uh, by just by looking at the financial statement, uh, we can put it up as a profitable ratio, profitability ratio, sovereignty ratio, liquidity ratio, and efficiency ratio. A good way for you to have a quick glance is just go to our cost guide website at uh, class eight. Let's go to it now. So we break it down into four key types of ratio, profitability ratio to help us understand how profitable is the company. It's especially useful if we are just comparing the two companies, like in our example, comparing Lenovo and Apple. You'll see how these two companies differ in terms of their profitability. So the first one is uh, gross margin. It's just taking the gross profit of the company divided by the revenue. Like we said before, if we have a product that we are buying it at $10 and we're selling it out at $20 retail, we are making a $10 profit from it. So we use the $10 profit divided by the $20 uh, revenue cost, revenue, and our gross margin is actually 50%. And we can do that for both Lenovo and for Apple, for any company that you want. The next is the operating profit. It's basically a measure of how profitable the business is. Uh, and, we, and when we take off the operating expenses before, like the MS, administrative expense or the selling and distribution expense, and we minus that and we just take the operating profit number, divide by revenue again, we get the prof, operating profit margin of the company. And we compare it with different companies and see which one is more profitable. Return on asset is how profitable a company is in generating new profit based on the asset that it has, right? A any company can generate profit, but the one that they can, they can do it efficiently with as little asset as possible might be more efficient as, an operate, uh, as, a, as a corporation, right? So uh, say if I need to invest $1 billion in a company and build up all the asset of 1 billion worth, but every year I'm just making 1 million in profit, my return on asset is just 1 million divided by 1 billion. So it's not very efficient. I'm just about 0.1% return on asset. That's, that's uh, quite bad actually. So we can do it for different companies just by dividing their net income, the last number that they have, the net net profit of the company divide by the average total asset. So the, the, the asset they have, say for fi this financial year and the last financial year, and we take, take the average from it. We can, we can go one more step on calculating what we call the return on equity because basically for a shareholder, we, all, the, all, the, all the investment that we're putting in is just the shareholder portion and not the entire asset because the asset can be funded from, from equity and from liability as well. So if we want to see how efficient the company is in generating profit based on what the shareholders have put in, we might just use the return on equity figures. And similarly to calculate that, it's just use the final net profit income divided by the average shareholder equities. Again, just go back to the fine, uh, balance sheet take the shareholders equity from this year and last year and take the average of it. Uh, typically a company with a return on equity of above 10% is quite de decent. That's basically mean that for every dollar that a shareholder puts in the company, the company is able to generate back 10 cents in profit. Now let's go back, go down to sovereignty ratio. Sovereignty ratio is a way to gauge how strong the company balance sheet is, how strong it can withstand a risk. One of the more common ones we use are what we call leverage ratio. It's basically just seeing the composition of its asset, how much is based on equity, how much is based on liability. And to do that, we just use the total asset divided by the total equity of the business. And the, and, and the higher the number means that um, a bigger part of the asset is actually being financed by debt or by liabilities, which is 
dangerous for equity because liabilities uh, holders will have a higher right to claim on the company than equity holders. So if the company is to fail or go into liquidation, the liability holders will always take the claim from the company asset first and whatever is left, then it will return back to the equity holders. So as an equity holder of the company, we want the business to be relatively less leveraged. In that case, it will be deemed less risky. A a leverage ratio of say two would mean that for every $2 of asset, $1 is being financed by equity and another dollar is being financed by the liability. So the higher the number, the more risky the company is. Another one is what we call debt to equity ratio. Uh, This is a more direct way to measure sovereignty um, as we just measure the debt count to the equity count. Instead of taking all the liabilities of a company, we just take out the portion of its borrowings or debt, its bonds, and we divide that by the equity. And if the company has a debt to equity ratio of one, it means that for every dollar of equity, the company has one dollar of debt as well. And again, the higher the number means the, the more risky the company is. We'll go on to liquidity ratio. It's, it's, a, it's a measure of whether the company has enough liquid asset to meet its short, short-term liability, right? Sovereignty ratio is more about how, the, how strong the company might be in the long run, uh, whereas liquidity ratio is talking about can the company meet its uh, short-term obligation in the next year or so. And, and, and this ratio helps us gain a better gauge on how well the company is doing. A simple way to do it is what we call the current ratio. It's just to take the current asset that the company has divided by the current liabilities. Do, does the company has enough current asset to pay off all its current liability? If the com- uh, a current ratio of more than one means that the co- company has enough current asset to, to pay off its current liability and the company should generally be quite safe. But if the number fall below one, uh, we need to investigate a little bit more uh, whether the company has the risk of not being able to pay off its current liabilities. We can be even more conservative uh, in taking into account what we call the quick ratio. A quick ratio is a more conservative uh, version of current ratio. We, we, will not, we will exclude things like inventory or prepaid expense of the company and just taking its cash or its short-term investments or its current receivables that we are quite comfortable in taking back in in the short term. We do it because sometimes the inventory of a company is not easily translated to cash. So if the company has inventory, did inventory in, in its balance sheet that it cannot sell out, then there's almost no value to it. And if we take the current ratio, it might create a wrong impression on how strong the company currently is. So we take the quick ratio. Again, it's just the cash plus short-term investment plus current receivables. And and we just divide that by its total current uh, liabilities. And moving on to the last type of ratio is what we call efficiency ratio. It's how well the company is utilizing its asset. Simple way to do it is how well the company is recovering its receivables. We call it account receivable turnover days. And the formula is basically your account receivables divided by the total sales of the company. So uh, times 365 days. So how long? the company is taking to take back its receivables. Generally, the smaller number is the better. Account payable turnover days is similarly to tell us how long the company is taking to pay back its its suppliers. And it's just taking the account payable divided by the total cost of sales. And we times 365 days. And generally, we want that to be a slightly higher figure, means that we have more bargaining power with our suppliers and we can pay them with a longer credit term. 
but we do not want it to be extremely long. Uh, it might hint that the company is having some liquidity problem and unable to pay back what it owes. And, and then we have what we call the infantry turnover days is how fast the company is turning around its infantry, how many turn of its inventory they are selling a year. And we just take the ending infantry of the year, divide by the cost of sales times 365. So how many turns the company is uh, selling of its infantry. And again, we want a smaller number. And we can put it all together to see how cash is being, being flow through the company and how big uh, working capital the company will need to finance its operation. And uh, the formula for cash conversion cycle or CCC is taking the account receivables turnover days plus the infantry turnover days and minus the way the account payable turnover days. It's basically showing us uh, from the start of when we hold the infantry to when we sell it to when we receive the money back and minus away how long we can hold off paying our suppliers. And it gives us a, a, a sense of how many days the company need to hold on to the cash, how many days the, the company need uh, in order to generate new cash coming into the business. The smaller number for this, this one is more important. And in some cases, uh, the number can go negative. Uh, what we call a negative cash conversion cycle business model is quite common for things like supermarket or it's being made famous by the company Dell where they have a very strong negative cash conversion cycle business model where they, they are basically funding the business by leveraging on the credit term that their supplier is giving them. And that's the end of uh, class eight. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, do comment down below and we'll try to answer as many as we can and try it out with a few companies that you're interested in, run through the ratios and try to read their financial statements and see if you're able to do that. Till next time.